Faith's Faith, Fact or Fiction, the dogma of the heliocentric universe, the rightness of the flat earth will all be debated tonight. Sir. Uh, it's very simple, ladies and gentlemen. You walk on flat ground, thus the earth is flat, like a pancake. And thank you, thank you. Um, all the lies about it being spherical are uh, absolutely untrue, because uh, it's never been proven. And how else could you argue with flat ground? You've never seen a round earth, have you? Have you ever seen a round earth? I have to admit, sir, no I have, and I've only read my textbooks. Exactly. Dear Jesus, the implications are mind-boggling. If you guys are just as excited about this man and about finding the truth, getting to the heart of the matter of whether the earth is flat or round, I want you all to stand oh, I'm sorry, up and come this way. We're going to have a big audience, event. a big crew. And you can always stand up. I'm talking to you people at the front. Snuggle in, snuggle in, fill all the way up. That was a the joke. That was a joke. There you go. Come on up. Come on up. Step right up. Step on this that your couch. Earth. Come on. Yeah, we cannot prove his round. Come on up, everybody. You got the remote control with you? Yeah, it's nowhere. We've assembled a panel of NASA scientists, the greatest spiritual leaders of the land. Yeah, actually, I'll, I'll do a change. Really fantastic. I can't wait. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we got we got a gentleman here who wants to nice. say something. According to Google, wow, that's really nice. He knows everything. <laughs> Since the Earth is rotating, which is a full call pendulum, if you are doubtful, the consistent oval, sh oval shadow it produces in each and every lunar eclipse proves that the Earth is not only round but spherical. Thank you. Please come over here, the mic's beating back pretty hard. If the Earth is at the circumference they tell you it is, then every 16 feet, it actually drops off. So, so if you're looking at a cruise ship that's out miles off, it will drop off 16 feet every mile that you can see it. So if you can see something about 10 miles off, how many, how much is that in feet? 16 times 10, we can all do simple math, right? 160 feet below the sea level, so why can you still see it at the same surface level? If she could have, she would have just dropped the mic. I would have, I, I would have, but I respect 
the, the pricing here, you know, this is not a very, you know, we don't have a lot of money going into these things. So. Thank you very much, Carl. Thank you for coming out tonight. Now a brief message from our sponsors. That's right.
please come in. Everyone, join the parlor. In 10 minutes, the world's greatest assembled experts will confer. to Middle Earth and you can look up his posting or look his YouTube channels of back in the 60s and 70s of when he first traveled to Middle Earth and he came to the public about it. There's also been other maps called the Liberian Map Collection. There's also the Liberian Map Collection where you can also see Middle Earth maps from the history that we have accepted as our maps in the last like, thousand years. Where is Middle Earth? Where is I just want to say, I've definitely, I've, I've tried, I was here early and I tried to set up my tent. They all try, how many people run tents in Symbiosis? Well, I'm trying to set up my tent and I can tell you right now, there is not a flat piece of land on this little piece of earth. I think this all came from those Burning Man people that live in flat land, flat places with flat things, all the flat stuff. I'm flat out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, the tension in the room is palpable, and we're about to begin. Tonight's panel is brought to you by generous donations from our sponsors, Facebook, the one true source for all things conspiracy, the History Channel, where history is made one documentary at a time, Alex Jones, the chosen one, and interna International House of Pancakes in IHOP we trust. <laughs> Amen. And now, time to introduce your panelist and host, Eric Davis! Thank you very much. Thank you very much, announcer guy. Uh, I'm Eric Davis, and uh, I'm, I'm a little proud right, right now, because I recently earned my PhD, and my... Uh, yes, thank you, thank you very much. So I'm a, you know, a, a smart guy, I guess, with a pedigree. Uh, and I got my degree in religious studies, and the title of my dissertation is High Weirdness. So that makes me kind of a doctor of the weird, and indeed I have spent my entire career, and even in my high school years, pursuing the weird, the odd, the occult, the paranormal, the conspiratorial, the psychedelic, the mystical, the Buddhistic. It's all been like food for my writing, for my journalism, for my intellectual work. And so I'm constantly tuning into these like, what's on the horizon? Where's it going? Where's the new paradigms that are spurting up like strange worms in this kind of morass of, uh, of, of infodelic excess that we live in these days? And so uh, uh, about a year and a half ago, I started to sense on my kind of weirdness radar the emergence of this earth, flat earth uh, meme. And you know, the flat earth has a certain not very impressive uh, pedigree as a kind of conspiracy going back throughout the last few centuries, tending not to really be taken very seriously by almost anyone, and yet it was sort of pouncing a little bit, like reading a little bit, but then, clearly, clearly the flatter thing is gaining a tremendous storm. As some of you know, as some of you know, this year's Lightning in a Bottle featured a panel about the flat earth, in which uh, various arguments were presented, uh, ideas were discussed, and uh, it, this caused a great deal of controversy because uh, our friends here to the, to the side, uh, not everyone is super into it, and emotions get really hot. In fact, people were so pissed off at Lightning in a Bottle for having this apparently you know, ridiculous, oh, absurd, uh, uh, conspiratorial panel that, that Lightning in a Bottle, the officials even went out to write a press release that was retracting their uh, affirmation of the flag. because there's a lot of people who really hold on to that round earth real hard. You know, round things, you know, they're kind of appealing. Uh, but, so what we decided to do here is like, you know, let, let's look at it. And in fact, I looked at it and I was finding out not just that there was 
the classic round earth and then the new upcoming flat earth uh, paradigm shift. But there was actually a wide variety of versions of this flat earth phenomenon. So we decided just to get everybody together and we're going to have a panel and we're going to talk to each person going to present their view. We're going to be try to be a little bit, you know, accepting of everybody's point of view, at least for the short term. So I'll try to keep keep the hot down. And there's, there's one thing you can do to uh, to help, which is that because people get into this stuff and they start geeking out and they start ranting, that they tend to go over time. We're on a tight timeline here. And so I'm going to be Keep doing this at one minute left for each panelist, and then if they just keep talking at that minute, that, that whole minute, at the end of that period, I'm going to go this, which is the number five in uh, Roman, and we're going to go five, all of us, five, four, three, two, one, bang, like a buzzer, like bang, like so, so loud they can't talk anymore. That's the only way, so you guys can help me control what will be perhaps slightly chaotic. All right, so we're going to begin. Uh, our first speaker tonight is J.P. Sears. He's known a life coach and uh, ultra spiritual teacher, and he's going to present his own findings within the flat earth controversy. J.P. It's an absolute fact that the Earth is flat. At least that's what my opinion is about what my opinion is about the fact that the Earth is flat. But I haven't always been basking in the light of this truth. Honestly, I spent a lot of my life as a round earther. And I, and I lived that way. I just, I didn't know how to live any differently. But after a while, life just got really hard. And I didn't even feel purposeful. But then I turned a corner and I discovered I'm a flat earther living inside of a round earther's body. And I'm not ashamed of it. It's who I am. And I think it's who you are, too. And I know that I think it's who you are, too. It's our true nature, being a flat earther. And I remember when I was living as a round earther, I just couldn't comprehend how the world could be round when it seemed so flat. And honestly, I think it's cute that some people still think the Earth has curvature to it. But well, welcome to the 21st century. The Earth isn't round anymore because it never was. Because it's flat. Because it always has been. So my mission is to democratize belief in the flat Earth theory so that it doesn't have to be a luxury of enlightenment reserved only for the intellectual elite. So I want you guys to have access to it as well. So I'd like to share with you simple proof that the Earth is definitely flat. First, we'll take a look at gravity. So roundies say that the Earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour. And by the way, I apologize for using such a harsh ethnic slur, but they are roundies. And if, if you think about it, keyword think, if, if the Earth was spinning at a thousand miles an hour, we would all fly off. 
But then the roundies say, well, no, JP, it's gravity that keeps us on the Earth. Gravity can't keep us on the Earth because gravity doesn't exist. Gravity is nothing but an anecdotal wet dream of Isaac Newton. You can't prove that gravity exists, and that proves that it doesn't exist. Gravity was just a ploy of Isaac Newton to try to validate his false theory that the Earth revolves around the sun. I think it's kind of funny. Thank you. I've never liked Newton. So by the way, game set match right there. There's no gravity. Then I also think it's worth looking at flight paths. If you research flight paths, I'm hallucinating microphones. That... By the way, notice the Illuminati signal because I almost said a bad word. Because I like the Illuminati, by the way. They're not bad people, they're just lizards. And I think they need our help. But that's for a different discussion. If you look at flight paths and use your mind, you look at people fly from Sydney, Australia to Peru, probably to do ayahuasca. So when they fly from Sydney, Australia to Peru, why do they do a layover in LA when LA is way out of the way? The reason why they do that is, if you look at a flat earth map, LA is directly on the way from Australia to Peru. And then the people who take a direct flight, those are the poor bastards. Those people, they're just kept in the air longer by the airline industry. Why? So the airline industry can charge them more money for their ticket. And also when you think about it, the round earth theory was in, invented in practically the same year as the aviation industry. It's like a 400 year difference, but it's practically the exact same year. So when you do the math, the round earth theory is nothing but propaganda by the airline industry to get more of your money. One minute show. And if you've ever been on the airplane and look out the window and think you're seeing a curve on the horizon, first off, you're wrong. Second off, they deliberately make the airplane windows to distort the horizon so that it looks round. And you have to realize you're looking through your eyeballs, which are round. Therefore, everything you see looks round, even though it's flat. So I encourage you to pierce through your fears and get in touch with your inner flat earther because it's your true nature. It's a beautiful message. All right, next up we have uh, Tyler Hansen and Benja Juster, and they're uh, they're going to be uh, they're they're both the uh, CEOs of Earth's Edge Enterprise uh, and uh, two enterprising young men uh, on the mission. Can you hear us? What's up, Symbiosis? Yeah, we're super proud to be one of the first sponsors ever at Symbiosis. We are Earth Edge Enterprises, my partner, Mr. Justin. And we had no fucking idea about what the hell the flat earth anything. I never I I assumed that the earth was round. Who has life. time to think about this shit? Who has time? So we we got we had no idea what we were looking for. Which is where you find truth often. We were at Summit at Sea. We were hanging out with Elon Musk. We met him at Bernie Man. We were hanging out because we got a Summit at Sea to help raise a lot of money. I'm the best store. Store. Oh, by the temple. Thank you. Know about. <laughs> Elon had lost his Sherpas. We had a whole holy moment with him. And so we're hanging out at Summit at Sea. Summit at Sea is this awesome cruise ship. It's like $6,500 to get on. Total steal. I mean, it's like best place to do networking. So, Elon Musk has a fucking amazing guy named Dustin Boyer. Dustin Boyer. Real class act. What's up? 
Dustin Boyer owns an island in the Bermuda Triangle. All right, so we go. Beautiful tropical paradise. We got off. We got off one cruise ship and we got on a smaller boat, a Tesla yacht. Holy shit! Elon let us borrow his own personal Tesla yacht. He's a nice guy. We're real close. <laughs> oh, we could call him. Yo, so anyway, we get lost. We get lost going to Bermuda Triangle, right? We get to the fucking Bermuda Triangle. All of our sensors, everything stops working. The everything. radars go down. Nothing. The Phones gone. Fucking the Atlas work. caught fire. Self incinerated. We had no idea where we were. And lo and behold, we came across the fucking edge of the earth, goddammit. I swear to God, I've seen it with my own eyes. I have a picture of it. The canyon so wide makes the Grand Canyon look like a pothole. I weeped. As we all know, it was so unbelievable. the edge of the earth is, well, well, as we all now know, the edge of the earth is surrounded by Antarctica. A giant glacier wall keeping us all inside of our own. It's unbelievable. unbelievable. But there is a place where you can see the actual fucking edge, which is unbelievable. Now, that's cool. We've been. Who else has been to the edge of the earth? All you fucking flat earthers and fucking middle earth people are wrong. It's just like the Grand Canyon, only better. And we want to take you there. So, we head back to Silicon Valley, where we're from. And we uh, acquired a couple mentors for our advisory board. Our now homies, Nasi. You guys know Nasi Harriman? Oh wait, that's David Wolf. That's Wolfie. They, uh, they look the same, it's just look alike. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, you uh, guys tell us, and we tripped out, we thought they were brothers. Yeah, Nasi and Wolfie, super sacred, sacred as fuck, acting on our advisory board. No, I mean, so this is my third company, it's been just fifth. So we have a good content, you know, like this is what we do in the valley. So we're, it's pretty easy to roll in with like, hey, we found something you rich motherfuckers really want to go check out. <laughs> Better than Burning Man, that's what we kind of sold. And we raised 10 million fucking dollars in, C in Series E. We got, <laughs> we're flush. So what we're doing is creating the first ever tour to the edge of the earth. It's going to be like, it's going to be like the Uber for the edge of the earth. Fuck yeah. Only it's really, really, really expensive. Like a lot of money. We're booked out till 2021 or so right now. So we got a whole fleet of Tesla yachts. And we pre sold In production. In production. And we pre sold all the seats. So we're booked up till 2020. Don't even bother asking. But, you know, since we did get all that funding, we're really proud to announce we have Symbiosis. First official sponsor. That's and right. I don't know if you guys know this, but there aren't any fucking sponsors except for us. Bosque is going on a ride. Not till 2019 though, but it's cool. So, if you all want to come, we have we are giving away one ride to the edge of the earth. All you have to do is text. Text us. 94253. I swear to God this is real. 94253. You will always get entered into our database. T text the Thank word you. flat earth, all lowercase, one word. To nine Do this two, now if you want to win a four, ride to the edge of the two, world. Five, three. Not a joke. Think for yourself and do something useful. Because seeing is believing, people. If you want the real, real, real truth, go to see the edge for yourself. Come to the edge and leave your mind behind. All you gotta do is leave your mind behind, and we'll take you to the edge. Hey, thank you so much. We got you guys are amazing. Yeah. You have a private party afterwards. Come and talk to us if you guys are really cute. Great, gentlemen. I just want to make sure you uh, you give the folks your website. Oh, and then, yes, uh -huh. you go to Flat Earth. Tour.com. That's flatearthtour.com. Go there right now. You can also see how you can win a prize of the lifetime. I don't know. None of you people can afford this shit, so this is the only way you're going to get to go. We are about democratizing the flat earth, though. I'm totally with JP on that. I really appreciate what he's trying to do. Great. Well, I mean, this is a delicious offer, a delicious offer, and I think all of you are going to be considering it very seriously within the next moments, perhaps hours, maybe even days. Now, next up, we had had, we had booked Annie Oak, some of you know Annie Oak, a, a, a pivotal figure in the community. Uh, she was going to present an alternative view of, of the shape of the earth. Unfortunately, circumstances were circumstantial and she was unable to attend. However, we do have a special guest that the uh, announcer guy is going to, well, announce. announce. Wait, what, what does this guy here want real quick? I'm sorry. We will get to we'll a Q&A. 
It's I was just wondering if we were going to hear from the NASA scientists. We are going to hear from oh, yeah, the yeah. We have a legitimate, no joke, Bonafide. check your uh, Google NASA scientist you on the Google. panel, and he will be speaking. We're just we're, we're letting everyone present their, their zone. All right. Thank you. Announcer guy. Ladies and gentlemen, there's been an awful lot of mansplaining up here on this panel. So we have a very swell young and beautiful young lady for you backstage. She wrote this song all by herself for you about how she feels about whether the earth is flat or not. Please welcome to the stage, Miss Rachel! Thank you for being here. Thank you all for sharing your wisdom. Um, we, um, we've heard a lot about the shape of the earth, and I think we all know intuitively that the earth, the earth is our mother. Right? It's our mother. Um, so I, I'd like to share this song, and once you, would, um, once you get the, the hang of it, I'd love for you to join me. Um, do we have buddy, buddies here? Okay, so you can watch him as well. Thank you. The earth is not flat, the earth is not a sphere, the earth is a crust, and San Francisco lies right here, so stroke your neighborhood, stroke your neighborhood, stroke your neighborhood, yeah, stroke your neighborhood, that's for you guys, ready? The earth is not flat, the earth is not a sphere. The earth is a breast and San Francisco lies right here. So stroke your neighborhood. <laughs> stroke your neighborhood. That's pretty. Stroke your neighborhood. Stroke your neighborhood. Feels good, right? Ready? The earth is not flat. The earth is not a sphere. The earth is... Okay, actually, I can't, I can't fucking do this shit. This is so... Oh, you guys, this is seriously, it's so, it's so fucking heteronormative. Of all the fucking panels I sent you, this is the one you picked, the boob one? The boob one. I just thought, I, yeah, you guys, I've been submitting proposals all over Symbiosis to try to get some women in these fucking panels. But I'll tell you what, they didn't like my Earth as a tampon proposal, okay? So here we are with some divine feminine fucking shit, right? Once again. Seriously, like, can a woman be on stage at this festival and do anything but love her body and stroke herself? And like, I mean, seriously, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm fucking over it. I can't do this shit anymore. Yeah. I can't I fucking that, do that, this that, shit. No, get the fuck away from me. Get the fuck away from me. No, and you know what? You know what? How do we get into this festival? A line, right? A, a line, right? And you just go, harder you yell, more I get it. Uh, yes, we're going to move on to a, uh, a, another w w white m male. Um, earlier we had a request for a uh, NASA scientist to speak, and I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Bruce Dahmer, who really, really, no joke, if you can believe us, is a NASA scientist. Uh, and uh, he's a little bit of a spaced out NASA scientist, as you'll see, but uh, He's here to give us the word. All right, take it away, Bruce. Spaced out. Spaced out. How many of you are spaced out? Well, today, oh. Today we have, we have a new, a new theory, a new paradigm, beyond, beyond the flat earth. And today you will be reading from the old Bible, flat lab, but hearing the new syrup from this universe. 
so beyond the flat earth. How boring can you get? Right, look at this. The clouds, they go here and have to turn around and come back here and then turn around and come back here. No! No! Breakfast theory predicts... Breakfast theory predicts that syrup, if you pour the syrup on the ground, it starts to move. It's moving toward something. It's moving toward an edge. So, they told me I could be everything, but I became a planet. And you say to me, flat earth, well, crepes are too thin to hold the planet up. Pancakes, they're not too thick. Pancakes make up the whole solar system. So we at NASA last week launched this mission. And this mission discovered from orbit that this is the actual shape of our Earth. The mission, the Shape the Plate mission, discovered a volcano, the Nutello Volcano. It discovered these conurbations. These are human conurbations and islands. Here's symbiosis. Here's LIB. Here's the planet. And the spacecraft looked in this direction and discovered our moon is a fried egg. And it has, and with, covered with Wensleydale cheese, for God's sakes. So we go on. Our mission went on, and we went to the edge of the pancake, and we discovered there was a ledge beneath the edge, and we found this guy. <laughs> well, who is this guy? And they said he was some singer from The Doors. The Doors of Perception. See, so he's pulling his brains out a line at a time. So, going beyond, Oh, we got here. Well, what we did was we went into our journals. Oh, and we found this man, citations from this man's work, Ralph Abraham. And he had created a new theory called chaos theory. And we thought, this probably explains everything about the edge and about you all here tonight. So I began to put two and two together from this man's brain. So I met with this man for lunch. And he used to work with a man named McKenna and another one named Sheldrake. And the three of those had figured it all out. They had figured it all out. Well, the theory that I had was that it's not just the pancake earth, it's the pancake universe. <laughs> the pancake universe. And we imaged it. We used Nassim's telescope. We found our universe right in the middle. Can you see it? So I then went on the internet and I said, well, what supports the pancake universe? What's going on here? And I found this guy. Do you see it? This guy. This is, this is, this is God supporting the universe. And we went to a parallel universe, and that's what it looks like. It's a waffle universe. Oh my God. So we had to do the math. So I'm going to go through the math, and, and here, here is the first equation that goes into the secondary equation, which then goes into the tertiary equation. Bruce, Bruce, let me stop here, right there, pal. I feel like you beat string theory, Bruce. Is this chaos theory? 
That's good. I feel like you're being a little insensitive to the flat earthers. And I'll have you know, with your pancake earth theory, I'm gluten intolerant, bro. How the hell can I exist with minimal foot inflammation if the earth was actually made out of a pancake? A pancake, minimal foot infection. I know. I think you need to rethink your theory. Order, order. We need order. We need order. Theory back to the lab. Fuck yeah. Please order, order, good people, order. Yeah, you guys are late. You go over here. You're over here. Okay. My name is Kumari. I am from a place called Alikash. Close your eyes. And this here with me. No. So understand. It has uh, very much made me sad to be here. Because as I come from Alikash, I watch how this place, this place in the West, for so many years this takes wisdom from far away and tries to put it into its own form. So, when I hear the conversation about the earth being a pancake, <laughs> it only confirms the feeling I have had. That it is a Eurocentric idea. So you may say, this is a breakfast food. We have the luxury of having all those meals. <laughs> that you can only have pancake in breakfast. What about dosa? What about roti? What about it, huh? And why am I saying this? Because in the Kumari Sutra, there is also this teaching. Loka Chapatam. What does that mean? Loka, it is word. Chapatam is a singular for Chapati. Is it right? So that is why we say this in old times. Loka Chapati. But the other problem I have is, as well, this idea, it is a very Western idea, that you say the world can only be round or the world can only be flat. And why is that? It is a duality. Is it not? The world will either be this way or it will be that way. But what I have learned from my teacher Kumare and his teacher Kumare <laughs> that 
there is a place in between, is it not? It's a place in between. Where the world is both flat and the world is round. So, I have shown, I have brought something to show you. So this is the same feeling. Do kach patam. It is not that it is flat and it is not the result, but it is both. So you see here, this is a flat chapat. And this is a round chapat. <laughs> It is not whether the earth is round or that it is flat. It is what is inside. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you very much, Kamari. Thank you, sir. We have a, uh, a flying bird flying over the flat road down here. We will get to uh, questions in just a moment. There are many chapatis and pseudo chapatis from south of the border flying through the air. But despite the revelry, I would like to wind up the panel with just a few questions because all of you are wondering, well, who's right? Is it flat? Is it round? Is it a chapati? Is it a breast? Can you all get to, in some sense, make up your own mind? Is it a something flying in the air? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. Oh, Let's bring it down. Order! Order! Let's bring us Reel it in. Reel it in. We can finalize <laughs> the, with the food fight. Bring it down. Come on, folks. I promise it's a serious more issue. issue. Come on, we're almost there. Let's, let's see, like, let's see a show of hands. And, like, we've been goofing with it. But come on, let's, let's step up with our uh, real model of the world. We all have a cosmology. How many folks out there, no shit, think the Earth is fucking round the way we were taught? I mean, come on. Let's see some hands. Not that many. We got two or three people. Uh, others uh, seem to be rising. Let's see some hands for the flat Earth. about to be in this world, you don't know what to fucking believe, you don't know who to trust, you're going to find it online, and the thing about the online world is it's going to reaffirm and reflect and resonate any question you ask. Any way of framing the problem will lead you down a rabbit hole, and we find that we are in a matrix of rabbit holes, and chapatis, and breasts. It's pancakes all the way down, pancakes. So be aware of the world that you are constructing. And though I would like to bring some focus to the end, because I believe there are some questions out here. Uh, and I, I think 
a little Q and A. Yeah, I don't have a lot of time here. I got a bunch of company to run. So if you guys want to ask a question, that's right. Let's, let's get some Q and A going. Do we have uh, Do we have any questions out there? You, you, uh, Miss, please. I mean, you, you should just kind of come forward because we won't be able to hear you otherwise. Just stumble bum your way, flying between the roundnesses. She's a pretty serious lady here. This isn't going to be so Pancake. Yes. You're all wrong. What, madam? Madam, then uh, what do all the pancakes sit on top of the next? Girl, you're very clever, sir, but it's pancakes all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. All right, pancakes all the way down. We got over another question. Uh, you, sir. This is really trippy, man. I uh, like hurt down like a massive amount of DMT the last time I came out of retrograde, and I had this vision. In this vision, I had uh, like, uh, and in this vision, I had uh, uh, I was actually just laying and it's like buried under something. But it's like I heard this voice coming down, and it was Terrence, and it was Terrence. You can't stand in front of the microphone. And it was Terrence. And I had this vision come down. You were, you were, you started with DMT. And it was uh, uh, I was doing DMT and I already bunched down and Terrence came to me River. and machine elf and he said to me, River. the universe is is actually a uh it's a uh, earth is resting in a pancake inside of a tit, inside of a chapati, inside of a tortilla. Thanks for your thanks, thanks for sharing. Uh, we got we got time for a few more. We got, here we go. Insecurities that you cover, that you come from with your childhood. I would pray for you, but you're not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, just, I, I care that much. Any uh, burning, other burning questions out here? This lady, young lady's been uh, giving me the grin, so here we go. Uh, I think maybe uh, the Bruce 
Would you like to take that since you, there was a breakfast theory behind that point? Well, as we know, the French toast is from France. So, hello! Um, that, that brings up the French fries theory. The French fries theory, and we don't want to go there. Probably not go. All right, my friends, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, I think many minds were made and unmade, uh, sort of the way one makes a, a chapati or another breakfast sort of food. Uh, we're going to finish off with a meditation, a blessing from Kumare. So please uh, gather yourselves, you know, feel the earth through your brain or your vibes through your extremities or whatever your practices are to prepare yourself for a nice spiritual drop at the end of this highly intellectual investigation of the nature of our cosmos. Please. Okay. Please close your eyes. Put your tortilla down. Relax your tortilla. On to the flat. And close your eyes. Try to shut your mind off. I still feel tortillas hitting my body. This is, a, this is a basic Western mind that is flying like tortillas everywhere. So just, just settle down your tortillas to your root chakra. You can sit on them as well. Just put it down and sit on it. <laughs> this place is a metaphor for your mind. So many pieces of bread, morsels everywhere. But you need to just inhale. Close your eyes. I want you to imagine in your mind a blue light. And I want you to focus on that blue light. And inhale and exhale. It will help to close your eyes. I want you to imagine around that blue light, there is like a sun, an orange sun. And I want you to inhale and exhale. Now I want you to imagine that that blue light is a blueberry and that sun is a pancake. And just focus your mind on the blueberry pancake. And inhale and exhale. So now imagine that there is no separation between your self, your true self, and the blueberry pancake. And imagine, inhale and exhale. Now I want you to now have your pancake self inside that blueberry, your true inner self. And I want you to imagine now that there is a soft, a soft syrup that is flowing down from the top chakra down to the down to the forehead chakra, down to the throat chakra, do you feel it? Down to your heart chakra and continue down, all the way down to the root chakra where your tortilla lives. <laughs> and I want you to just inhale and exhale, this syrup. Going down your body. And imagine that blueberry, how delicious that blueberry is. Inhale and exhale. Repeat after me. 